وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته we begin, as always, by praising Allah Azza wa Jal, by asking Allah to exalt the mention and grant peace to our Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his family and his companions. Inshallah Ta'ala, this episode is a continuation, the second part of our sort of tying everything up and wrapping everything up as it relates to our previous discussion. And we said there were a number of ahadith, a number of ayat that I alluded to in previous videos. I kind of mentioned it in passing, but I didn't really get to it in detail. So I wanted to bring those ayat in and also just to mention a couple of extra points that come to mind, inshallah ta'ala. So we're asking everyone after every hadith, after every ayah, pause the video and have a think where you think it fits in and what are the benefits you can take from it. So we're going to start with a hadith of our mother Aisha radiallahu anha. مَا ضَرَبَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ خَادِمًا لَهُ وَلَمْ رَأَهُ وَلَا ضَرَبَ بِيَدِهِ شَيْئًا The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never struck a servant of his, nor a woman, nor his wife or any woman. And he never struck anyone or anything with his hand. Where does this fit into our discussion? Muslim family, the concept of marriage, the ideal wife, the ideal husband. Where do we put this in and what are the benefits? Have a think. So inshallah ta'ala, you had a chance to pause and think about that. So I would put this under the ideal husband, that the ideal husband is not the one who hits his wife. And we spoke in the hadith of Um Zar about the woman who said, Shajjaki aw fallaki aw jama'a kullan laki. That whether he cuts your head or, or makes your head bleed or wounds your head or wounds your body or does both at the same time. And we said that even though we're going to discuss in the topic of Anushu's, inshallah, of marital discord, we're going to discuss about the issue of whether a husband is allowed to, uh, for want of a better word, hit his wife or even tap his wife. Is that allowed or not allowed? What are the conditions and rules and regulations around that? We're going to talk about that, inshallah ta'ala. But as the best example that we can take, the example of the Prophet, he never ever hit a woman. He never raised his hand to a woman, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi, nor did he raise his hand to anything except in battle, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. And there are other narrations that indicate except in battle. In battle, it's the only time he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, raised his hand because Allah Azza wa Jal sent him rahmatan lil alameen, as a mercy to all of mankind. So he set the best example in that regard. Our next hadith, uh, and by the way, that was hadith was in Sahih Muslim from Aisha radiallahu anha. Our next hadith is in Musnad al-Imam Ahmad from Aisha radiallahu anha. إِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ بِأَهْلِ بَيْتٍ خَيْرًا أَدْخَلَ عَلَيْهِمُ الرِّفْقِ If Allah wants good for a household, He puts softness and gentleness, compassion. That's just one word, rifq, but I'm just bringing out those words, softness, gentleness, compassion between them. Where does this fit in? So inshallah ta'ala, you had to think about that. Uh, I believe that this can fit in pretty much anywhere in our discussion because it talks about Ahlul Bayt, an entire family, an entire household of people. That all the people in that household, that Allah Azza wa Jal, if He wants good for them, He puts rifq between them. Softness, compassion, gentleness, kindness, husband to wife, wife to husband, children to parents, parents to children. Rifq, or lean, softness and gentleness. So I think that's where that one fits in. Also, Sahih Muslim, An Abi Hurairah radiallahu an, qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la yafrak mu'min mu'mina, in kariha minha khuluqa radiya minha akhar, aw qala ghayra. Hadith from Abi Hurairah in Sahih Muslim, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, let not a believing man hate a believing woman. If he finds within her a characteristic, a mannerism or a habit, 
that he dislikes, he will find another that he is pleased with, or he will find others that he is pleased with. Where does this fit in? Have a think. Inshallah Ta'ala, you took some time to think about that one and take the benefits from it. So I believe this fits in the characteristics of the ideal husband. That the ideal husband, he doesn't hate his wife. He doesn't, he doesn't feel that enmity and hatred, even though he will find characteristics that he doesn't like, habits that he doesn't like, behavior that he doesn't like. At the end of the day, none of us are perfect, except for Al-Anbiya wa Rusul, alayhim salatu salam that Allah gave them that perfection, the prophets and the messengers, alayhim salatu salam, that Allah gave that perfection too in terms of the way that they dealt with their families and the way they behaved. You're all gonna have behaviors between husband and wife. And to be honest, you can take this also for the, for the wife as well. You, both husband and wife are gonna have behaviors that the other one doesn't like. Try to minimize them, work together to get rid of them, talk to each other about them. We'll talk about that inshallah ta'ala in the topic of Anushul's discord and disagreements. But ultimately, if you have something you don't like, you have a lot of things that you do like, a lot of other things that you do like. So there's no need for a person to feel like, oh, you know, I, for example, a, a, a husband, he says, you know, that I'm not, I, I'm not happy with my wife. I don't like my wife. And then he mentions something like salt in the food. She puts too much salt in the food or she, you know, doesn't listen to me about this small thing or I don't like the way that she uh, talks in a certain way or I don't like the way she does this. Small little things. But if he dislikes something, you're going to have loads of other things that you like. So ultimately, it's not for a person to have that kind of hatred or strong dislike for their spouse because of a behavior that is irritating them or a characteristic that's irritating them. Of course, both spouses are gonna to work to get rid of those, work to get over them, work to minimize them, but ultimately, they're not gonna make that a reason for their marriage to be on shaky ground or on, on rocky ground because of, you know, this, uh, because of something small, a small behavior or a small a characteristic that they don't like. Our next hadith, an Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu qal, and I'm just going to quote you a part of the hadith here. The, orig the original part of the hadith is in Sahih Muslim, but I'm just quoting you a part from, uh, from another source of the same hadith. أَيُّمَا رَجُلٍ رَأَ مْرَأَةً تُعْجِبُهُ فَلْيَكُمْ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ فَإِنَّ مَعَهَا so, the translation of this hadith. Abdullah bin Mas'ud, he said, and the hadith has a, a story to it, but we're just going to mention the, the part that I want from the hadith. Whichever man sees another woman, i.e. a foreign woman, not uh, his wife, another woman, that he is, she impresses him. You know, he's attracted to her. She, you know, is alluring to him. Let him go to his family. I let him go and be intimate with his family. I let him go to his wife and satisfy his need and his desire from his wife. For she has the same as she has. I, she has the same as the other one has. Where are we going to fit this in to the characteristics of the ideal husband or the ideal wife or the concept of marriage or the Muslim family? This one might be a little bit of a tricky one to think about, have a think about it. Okay, so you maybe had to think about that one. I actually brought this on the topic of beauty and the topic of uh, when we said uh, and one of them was for her beauty. For her beauty. So what I wanted to show here is the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam فَإِنَّ مَعَهَا مِثْلَ ذِي مَعَهَا For what is with the first one or what is with his wife is like, is the same as what is with the other one. Is that ultimately if a wife is to beautify herself and to make an effort that that will be enough for her husband. That she has what every other woman has and she shouldn't uh, you know, sort of, it's not a matter that his wife has to be the most beautiful woman in the whole world. She has what the other one has. At the end of the day, he's going to get the same satisfaction and the same uh, enjoyment and the same benefit that he would get from any other. 
So what I brought this for is a further clarification on the topic of beauty. But she makes an effort. She makes the biggest effort she can with, with whatever Allah has given her from the beauty that Allah has given her. But I wanted to bring this to show that it is enough. And also you could bring it in the topic of the ideal husband in the sense of uh, him being satisfied with his wife and not letting his eye go out to other women. Now it is natural that a man may walk past a woman or in these days and Allahul Musta'an he may walk past a picture of a woman that has been through as we said Photoshop and whatever else and it comes into his heart to ajibuhu he thinks wow she's really amazing beautiful and his heart starts to go like as if the shaitan is pulling him and the Prophet explained this like it's like a shaitan it's like a shaitan that's pulling him that way what does he do? He goes to his wife and he is intimate with her because at the end of the day, he will get the same satisfaction. The, the, his wife has what the other woman has. And so I wanted to highlight this specifically from the point of beauty that a woman shouldn't feel that, oh, well, I can't satisfy my husband if he's if I'm not really beautiful or if I'm not really whatever it might be what people want tall or really whatever people find attractive in in uh, a woman but ultimately it's not like that she has everything that she needs to make her husband happy that's why I wanted to bring it she has everything she needs she has what every other woman has she has what every what, what she needs and also from the characteristics of the husband, the ideal husband, that he should not let his eye wander. And if his eye does, without him being without it being deliberate, settle upon another woman, let him go to his wife because he will find satisfaction in that and he will find contentment in that. And that will take his, that other thing that he saw out of his heart, as is mentioned in uh, the other narrations of this hadith. Our next hadith, An Abi Hurairah, عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال واستوصوا بالنساء فإن المرأة خلقت من ضلع وإن أعوج شيء في الضلع عليه إن ذهبت تقيمه كسرته وإن تركته لم يزل أعوج استوصوا بالنساء خيرا This hadith is in uh, Bukhari and Muslim from the hadith of Abi Hurairah from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he said Be good to your women because the woman was created from the rib and the most bent part of the rib is the highest part. If you go trying to straighten it, you will break it. And if you leave it, it'll still be bent. It'll still be crooked. So treat your women well. Now, I'm gonna actually just make a variation here. I'm gonna ask you to pause the video and think, but I'm going to ask you to bring a characteristic of the ideal wife and the ideal husband from this. The ideal wife and the, and don't say the ideal wife is the one that doesn't have the crookedness of the bent rib because all of them have that. I mean, that is uh, completely what Allah, how Allah created the woman. Uh, but what can you take from the ideal wife here? The ideal husband might be easy, but what are you going to take from the ideal wife here as well as the ideal husband? Have a think. Okay, inshallah ta'ala, you had to think about that. So uh, here, the ideal husband, no doubt, is that the husband is one that doesn't try to break his wife, i.e. he doesn't try to correct every small fault because ultimately she was created with a certain crookedness in the sense of uh, that she was created from the bent rib and she inherited a certain thing in that. And ultimately, if you try to correct every small fault, you'll snap the rib. And if you snap the rib, it is a talaq, it's divorce. You'll divorce because you want to correct every little thing in your wife. You want to correct every small, tiny, little miniature mistake that she makes. You want to correct it. It's like a person who takes a rib that has a bend in it and he keeps on trying to make it straight until snap. The rib is broken. He didn't treat her well. He didn't look after her. He just ends up splitting from her. She ends up miserable. He ends up miserable because he's trying to correct every small fault. 
Instead, he looks at what's important. Al-aham fal-muhim. Start with the most important, the next important, and so on. And he, you know, goes about things in that way. He doesn't try to correct every small, tiny, little thing and pull it up on every little thing. As for the characteristic of the ideal wife that we take from this, then I take from this that she does her best to guard her tongue. Because the scholars, they said that the meaning of that the most crooked part of the rib is the upper part, the scholar said it's the tongue. It's that sometimes she says things that with her tongue she doesn't mean. So she might say uh, to her husband, I've not seen any good from you, or it was never good to marry, you've never done anything good for me, and so on. So the ideal wife tries to reduce the amount of times and minimize the amount of times that she might say something that is uh, not right, or she might lash out with her tongue, or she might hurt her husband with what she says, and she tries to minimize that to the absolute minimum uh, possible. That's what I would take on the topic of the ideal wife from that particular hadith. Our next hadith, وعن عائشة رضي الله عنها أنها قالت ذكر رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خديجة فتناولتها فقلت عجوز كذا وكذا قد أبدلك الله بها خيرا منها قال ما أبدلني الله خيرا منها I'll just translate the first part of the hadith. Aisha, she said that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم mentioned Khadija. So I had a go at her. I said something bad about her. I said, she's an old woman, this and that. Allah has replaced her for you with someone better than her. The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah has never replaced her with better. Allah has never replaced for me with better than her. لَقَدْ آمَنَتْ بِي حِينَ كَفَرَ النَّاسِ وَأَشْرَكَتْنِ فِي مَالِهَا حِينَ حَرَّمَنِ النَّاسِ وَرَزَقَنِ اللَّهُ وَلَدَهَا وَحَرَّمَنِ وَلَدَ غَيْرِهَا قُلْتُ وَاللَّهِ لَا أُعَاتِبُكَ فِيهَا بَعْدَ الْيَوْمِ the remainder of the hadith, Aisha, she said that the Prophet said that Wallahi, Allah didn't, has never replaced her with better. She believed in me when the people disbelieved in me. She helped me by giving me some of her wealth when the people didn't give me anything. And Allah gave me children from her when Allah had not allowed me to have children from others and his other wives. Aisha said, by Allah, I will never, any, u'atibuka, yani, I will never, ha, I will never sort of have a, or, it's kind of like a, not a blame, but I will never sort of have a go at you about her after today. Or I will never have a go, I will never say anything like that uh, uh, to you about her after today. What can we take from this? Have a think. So actually, there's a lot of benefits you can take from this hadith, but I wanted to take it from the point of view of the ideal wife. Look at what the Prophet ﷺ said about, hadith, about Khadija. That when all the people didn't believe in him, Khadija believed. When the people didn't help him, Khadija helped him. And that's from the, 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 the characteristic I wanted to focus on here is the wife that helps out her husband. Now, obviously, that wealth belonged to Khadija radiallahu anha, and the Prophet ﷺ was required to spend upon her. But Khadija radiallahu anha, she helped out the Prophet sallallahu when no one else helped him out. Or when very few people helped him out. Generally the people, they didn't help him or they weren't, they weren't supporting him in anything and she supported him radiallahu anha. And Allah azza wa jal gave children through her. So she was walud. She had many children for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even though he wasn't able to have children from other than her with the exceptions that we know for later on within the seerah. And the likewise we can take from the statement of Aisha that she said and she said I will not you know I'm not going to say anything about her I'm not going to have a go about her to you ever after today and that, that is also from the the characteristics of the ideal wife in terms of that she shouldn't uh, say anything uh, about a, a co-wife uh, or anything that would make a husband uh, upset like that or to ha to say anything like that that uh, and she should, and she admitted her fault radiallahu anha Aisha she admitted that she had she had made a mistake about that and she shouldn't have said that 
But why she said it is because the Prophet always used to mention Khadija with good. And he always used to, and he used to do a lot for, even though Khadija had passed away, radiallahu anha, he used to, even her friends, he would send gifts to her friends. Uh, and, and he would look after her friends because of how much he had that uh, love for Khadija and how excellent Khadija was. So this is really a beautiful description of the ideal wife, but I wanted to take it from the point of view of supporting a wife, supporting her husband, even if it is in the voluntary things like the wealth and so on, but really trying to do her very best for her husband and really trying to help him and support him, maybe at the times when nobody else supports uh, him. The next is an ayah in which Allah Azza wa Jal said, وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا Those who say, our Lord, give us, grant us from our wives or spouses and our offspring, that which will be the pleasure for our eyes and make us an example for the pious. Here, I want you to take, uh, again, two. The ideal wife and the ideal husband. I'm not going to make it easy for you. So pause the video, have a think. Inshallah ta'ala, you pause the video, you had to think about that. Uh, first of all, no doubt the dua is a beautiful dua for the husband to make, for the wife to make. That, oh Allah, give us from our spouses and our offspring that which is a pleasure for our eyes. From the point of the ideal wife, the ideal husband, being a pleasure, being qurrat ayn for your spouse. That when you look at them, you just, you feel satisfied, you feel content. And that doesn't mean that the beauty necessarily, beauty might be a part of it. But it also just means when you look at them, you feel alhamdulillah, that's, you know, alhamdulillah, I'm happy. Qurrat ayn, what makes your eye, the coolness of your eye, the pleasure of your eye. And also, وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ imama That both the husband and the spouse should be an imam, as an example. The husband and the wife should be an example for the pious people. The husband should be an exemplary husband and the wife should be an exemplary wife. Because one of the meanings of imam is an example for others to follow. So the husband is an example for other husbands to follow. He's like an exemplary husband and the wife is an example for other women to follow. She's like an exemplary, an exemplary wife. So we can take that also from the ayah. Our next hadith is a hadith of Thawban radiallahu an. The Prophet in this hadith he said, لِيَتَّخِذْ أَحَدُكُمْ قَلْبًا شَاكِرًا وَلِسَانًا ذَاكِرًا وَزَوْجَةً مُؤْمِنَةً تُعِينُهُ عَلَىٰ أَمْرِ الْآخِرَةً let one of you take, let one of you take from this world a heart that is grateful and a tongue that remembers Allah and a believing wife that will help him in the matters of his akhirah. In another narration, tu'inuhu ala amri deenika wa dunyak. That she will help you in matters of your deen and your dunya. Where do we take, or what do we take from this? So inshallah ta'ala, you had to think. What we take from this is very simple in the characteristics of the ideal wife is that she is someone who has three characteristics mentioned here. She's mu'mina, she's a believer. And that means that, you know, we really look for the deen first. It's the deen that matters. And she helps the husband in his akhirah. She helps him to get closer to Allah and she helps him in his dunya, in his worldly life. She helps him in his dunya, keeping him chaste, uh, you know, meeting his needs, looking after him and looking after his house and his property and so on. She helps him in his dunya and she helps him to get nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's from the characteristics and the most important of the characteristics of the ideal wife we said is that a deen, the one who is the woman of religion. In our next hadith, arba'un من السعادة وأربع من الشقاء فمن السعادة المرأة الصالحة تراها فتعجبك وتغيب عنها فتأمنها عن على نفسها ومالك. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said four things are from happiness and four things are from misery. So from happiness, and I'm just going to focus on one, he said, a righteous wife. When you see her, she impresses you. And when you are absent from her, you trust her with herself and with your money. And I'm going to continue the hadith. 
the Prophet says, I'm just quoting the part of it. وَمِنَ الشَّقَاءَ And from the, from misery. الْمَرْأَةُ تَرَاهَا فَتَسُوءُكْ وَتَحْمِلُ لِسَانَهَا عَلَيْكَ وَإِنْ غِبْتَ عَنْهَا لَمْ تَأْمَنْهَا عَلَى نَفْسِهَا وَمَالِكَ The hadith is in, uh, Al-Hakim, Al-Hakim reported it uh, from Sa'id ibn Abi Waqqas. He said, from misery is a woman that you look at her and she makes you feel, you know, she makes you feel horrible. When you look at her, you just feel terrible. And she carries her tongue against you and she uses her tongue against you. And when you are absent from her, you don't trust, you're not able to trust her with herself or your money. What can we take from this? So inshallah, there's lots of things to take from this on the ideal wife. Uh, first of all, that a woman should be when a husband looks at her, he feels pleased with her. And that can be that she takes care of her appearance, it can be the way she behaves, it can be her Islam, it can be her all the aspects of the ideal wife. The husband looks and he thinks, Alhamdulillah, this is the ideal wife, so happy with her. And that it's not when he looks at her, he's like, oh, you know, either she doesn't, she isn't presenting herself nicely, or she, I mean, we said she isn't making the most of what she has or that she has bad manners, bad characteristics, or she's not worshipping Allah the way that he would want, or she doesn't have the right characteristic or good manners. And also this issue of the tongue, that she doesn't, she's not a one with a sharp tongue all the time beating her husband up. We talk about the husband doesn't hit his wife. We talked about the Prophet ﷺ didn't hit any servant of his, and nor did he hit any wife or any woman of his. But subhanAllah, some women beat up their husbands with the tongue. Some women, women they, I mean some women, perhaps some women beat up their husbands physically. I can have that, I can say it's nadir, it's rare. But it's very common that there are women that beat up their husbands with their tongue. Just the tongue is always against the husband, always has something bad to say about the husband. So this is not from the characteristics of the ideal wife, she has to reverse this. Sometimes she's going to say certain things, that's natural. Husband's going to sometimes get angry, it's, it happens. But generally speaking, she's going to be somebody who controls that tongue and keeps it under control and doesn't keep hitting her husband with it all the time with those words and this and the next point that we're going to take is that when the husband is away he feels safe with her for herself her covering her hijab and so on and also with regard to the wealth of the husband now with the wealth of the husband that doesn't mean she's not going to spend anything she's going to spend it on her needs according to what her husband's given permission and agreed to and so on but what it means here is that he knows she's not going to squander his wealth. He's not going to come back and she's like, yeah, I bought this and this and this and this and this from your wealth without his permission and he doesn't know about it. And then all of his wealth or a lot of his wealth or a large amount has gone. And also he feels safe with her. He trusts her with regard to herself in terms of a hijab, in terms of the way she interacts with other people and so on. So that's a great benefit that we can take from this uh, hadith. Our next hadith that we're going to take is a hadith in uh, Al-Bayhaqi from the hadith of Abi Uthayna that he said خَيْرُ نِسَائِكُمْ الْوَلُودِ الْوَدُودِ الْمُوَاسِيَ الْمُوَاتِيَ إِذَا اتَّقَيْنَ اللَّهِ وَشَرُّ نِسَائِكُمْ الْمُتَبَرِّجَاتِ الْمُتَخَيِّلَاتِ هُنَّ الْمُنَافِقَاتِ لَا يَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةَ مِنْ هُنَّ إِلَّا مِثْلُ الْغُرَابِ الْأَعْصَمِ This is a very, very subhanAllah worrying hadith to be honest. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, the best of your women are the one who is loving and will bear you many children, the one who is comforting and the one who is tolerant, if she has taqwa of Allah, or if they have taqwa of Allah. And the worst of your women are the ones who are mutabarrijat, they are not covered, and they are mutakhayyilat, they have arrogance, they are the hypocrites. They will not, none of them or not one of them will enter Jannah except for like the the al Qurab al asam the crow with the red legs and it's very rare and extremely rare that one of them will enter Jannah. So what do you think about this? Where can we put this? So this is relating to the ideal wife. So we have four characteristics. We have al walud al wadud we mentioned. We have also al muasiya al muatiya the one who is uh, comforting to her husband, we've talked about this, that she is لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا She comforts him and she's tolerant, she's easy going with him. And she has taqwa of Allah, that's the fifth one. She has taqwa of Allah. And also a warning against two things. 
التبرج, which is not having the proper hijab. And the worst of your women are المتبرجات. ولا تبرجنا تبرج الجاهلية. Don't expose yourself and go out without your hijab like you used to do in jahiliya. The worst of your women are the ones that are mutabarrijat, they expose themselves, they're not the proper hijab. And we're not just talking about the headscarf and that's it. You know, don't get me wrong, we fully understand how difficult the hijab can be and how much support our sisters in Islam need and that's a given and the husband should support his wife in that. But it is not, it's not okay, it's not good, it's not like, you know, acceptable that a woman, she doesn't keep a proper hijab and she goes out and adorns herself uh, either by not keeping a hijab properly or by she wears perfume or jewelry or makeup or whatever it might be and she goes out like the women used to go out in the time of Jahiliya. The Prophet said, Sharru nisa'ikum, the worst of your women. المتبرجات, the ones who go out without their proper covering. المتخيلات, the ones who have the arrogance. They are المنافقات, they are the hypocrites. And here, any the hypocrite here is uh, nifaq amali. It's nifaq which is in action. And it's not the nifaq which makes you a kafir, which makes you a disbeliever. But know that it's a, it's a symbol of the munafiq. لا يدخل الجنة منهن إلا مثل الغراب الغراب الأعصن. None will enter paradise from them except like the crow with yani that, that crow, the rare crow with the red legs and the, the red features. Yani it's, it's, a, it's a rarity that one of them will enter Jannah. I.e. in the first instance, yani like in the, with the people who enter Jannah in the first instance. Subhanallah. That's a very, very worrying hadith. Wallah. And we really have to say to our sisters in Islam, take care of your hijab. And I know don't, people are going to watch this video at different levels. Going to be some sisters who just starting with their hijab, just struggling, maybe, you know, sometimes, sometimes not. It's not to say to you that, you know, give up and, and stop and whatever. But it's just to understand that it's not an it's not something that's that is easy in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not something small in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we say from this the ideal wife, we had those five characteristics at the beginning, and also She's very careful about her covering. And also, how many women wear hijab and then makeup and perfume and so on. This is also from tabarruj al-jahiliya, from the exposure, exposing themselves like the way of jahiliya. Even if it is less than some of the other examples that we mentioned, then it still, it still falls under that category. So it's very, very important. She takes care of her hijab and that she is humble. And uh, of course, that is something that both men and women should uh, aim for to be humble, to be uh, not to be arrogant, and not to have not to have pride. From the hadith of Abi Huraira رضي الله عنه, خير النساء التي تصره إذا نظر وتطيعه إذا أمر ولا تخالفه في نفسها ولا مالها بما يكره. This hadith in Imam Ahmad. Uh, narrated it and Imam al Nasai from Abi Huraira. The best of the women are the ones that if you that she makes you happy when you look, obeys you when you command, and she doesn't go against you with herself or her money in that which he would dislike. Where are we gonna put this one? So inshallah ta'ala, you had to think about it. Uh, this again relates to some of the characteristics of the perfect wife uh, or the ideal wife. The best of the women are the ones that we've mentioned. If you look at her, your content, that doesn't mean that she necessarily has to be amazingly beautiful, but she makes an effort with her appearance. She does the best she can. And her uh, akhlaq, her manners and her behavior and her religion, when you look at her, you're happy. And when you command her in that which is not disobe disobeying Allah Azza wa Jal, she obeys, she's obedient in terms of, and that we're going to talk about the husband as the head of the household and how the family is set out and the interactions between the husband and the wife. And she doesn't go against her husband with herself in her anything relating to herself, who she spends her time with, how she dresses, how she behaves, she keeps herself in terms of her chastity and so on, nor her wealth in something a husband would dislike. So it's a very, there's a lot of characteristics there regarding the ideal wife. Some of them we had mentioned uh, before. So that's all we have time for in this episode. 
And that concludes some of the many uh, ahadith on this topic. To be honest, we didn't cover all of the ahadith, nor did we cover all of the ayat, but we just covered what Allah Azza wa Jal made easy uh, for us to mention on that topic. In our next episode, we're going to go on to talk about the marriage contract itself and what that entails and how that is structured. And then later after that, we'll go on to talk about the rights of the husband and the rights of the wife. That's what Allah made easy for me to mention. Allah knows best. Wassalatu wassalam ala Rabbi Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'i. Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amauathome.com.